All right, it's six o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and call the school board meeting for Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020 for the Des Moines Public Schools to order. Please call the roll. Ms. Anderson. Here. Mr. Barron. Here. Ms. Bradley. Here. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Mr. Cody. Here. Ms. Della Gardell. Here. Ms. Sawyer. Here. I want to welcome all members of our community to our board meeting. We thank all guests, board members, and participants in advance for keeping their mic microphones muted until it is the appropriate time to speak. If you're interested in speaking to an agenda item, please let us know in the chat or contact Erin Jenkins on her email at erin.jenkins at dmschools.org. Uh, the first item of business this evening is the approval of the agenda. All right, um, Kirsten, I need to um, make a motion to, sorry. That's okay. Pull the personnel um, from the agenda. Okay, so you're looking to pull item C11 off of yeah. consent? Yes, sorry, I can't, I can't look okay. at two screens at once, I guess. Nope, I'm trying to do the same thing. Do we have yeah. a second on Ms. Anderson's motion? Caldwell Johnson, second. Okay, now I think we have to vote to, we can just vote on the amended agenda, is that correct? Procedure? Okay, yes. perfect. Um, any questions or discussion board on the amended agenda? I guess we have to make a motion first. Are we? Do we have to vote first? No, we need to have discussion first. Any questions or discussion on the amended agenda? So I can vote on the amended agenda, right? To you can vote to amend the agenda. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, will you go ahead and call? Um, we have a motion by Anderson and a second by Caldwell Johnson to amend our agenda to pull um, item. C11 off of consent to a separate action item. Ms. Anderson. And then is this, I, I can, I have to abstain right here? No, this okay. is where you're voting yes to approve yes. changing our Okay, agenda. never mind, yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Ms. Della Gardell. Yes. Ms. Sawyer. Yep. Yes. Okay. Motion passes seven. The vote is approved seven zero. The next item on our agenda is approval of our minutes for Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? So move Caldwell Johnson. Second, Anderson. We have a motion by Caldwell Johnson and a second by Anderson. Please vote. Ms. Anderson. Okay. Yes. Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Ms. Della Gardell. Yes. Ms. Sawyer. Yes. Okay, and I do not believe we have any district recognitions this evening. Is that correct, Dr. Ahart? That right. is correct. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to consent items. The next item on the agenda is our consent items. We allow any person the opportunity to speak to the board for up to five minutes following the presentation of an agenda item. If anyone wishes to speak to an agenda item, please go to the information desk to sign up. And by information desk, please use um, the chat or you can email Aaron Jenkins. 
Uh, remarks must be germane to the agenda, and we ask that you avoid reference to personalities and character attacks as those types of comments serve no productive purpose. We appreciate your input. As a reminder to the board and public, the board will not engage in discussion or deliberation with the speaker regarding comments made to agenda items. Discussion and deliberation will remain among board members at the board table with speakers as comments informing said discussion, deliberation, and determinations as deemed necessary. Mr. Barron, I believe you have the consent motion. Thanks, I do. I move that the board approve the consent items in accordance with the recommended action for each item on the consent agenda, including bills previously authorized, certified, and approved for payment by the board secretary in the amount of $4,763,904.10. Mr. Caldwell Johnson, second. Thank you. We have a motion by Barron and a second by. Um, by Caldwell Johnson. Any discussion or questions? I don't believe we have any speakers signed up. Is that correct, Ms. Jenkins? That is correct. Okay. So any questions or discussion by board members? All right. Please call the vote. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Ms. Della Gardell. Yes. And Ms. Sawyer. Yes. Okay, the consent items are approved 7-0. Um, I believe we have one other item of business in this part of the agenda that I will take a motion for on item C-11. Move approval. Second. All right, we have a motion by Caldwell Johnson and a second by Barron on item C11, which is our personnel recommendations. Ms. Jenkins, please call the vote. Ms. Anderson. And um, I need to abstain from this vote. My husband is on the personnel listing, so um, that's why I'm abstaining. So. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Ms. Bradley. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Ms. Della Gardell. Yes. And Mr. Sawyer, or Ms. Sawyer, sorry. Yes. <laughs> All right, item C11 passes. 601. Um, the next item on our, on our agenda is item E1, resolution to continue participation in the instructional support program and to schedule a public hearing. Dr. Ahart, I turn this item over to you for presentation or introduction. Yes, so the school district has participated in the instructional support levy for um, at least two decades. Um, we are up for renewal. Um, there's a couple of different options. I'm going to a vote or board approval, which is for a five year period of time rather than a 10 year, which is a voter approved. And so what we're recommending or what I'm recommending is that the uh, board uh, adopt a resolution of intent to reauthorize the district's ISL or instructional support levy. Um, this resolution would set a date for a public hearing of, on the board's intention to adopt the renewal of the ISL or instructional support levy for a five year period from July 1 of 2021 to June 30, 2026. This would not have any impact on our tax levy rate. Um, this is simply a renewal of a, a long standing levy. And uh, as the uh, as the item notes, um, the the revenue from this levy is uh, a little north of $14 million, and that means um, we have enough dollars in there to pay for nearly 200 teachers. So um, I'm recommending that we um, that the board adopt this resolution and um, we would hold the public hearing in July and um, vote in August and then the effective date would be August of I'm sorry, July of 2021. May I have a motion and a second to approve um, the superintendent's recommendation? 
So moved, Anderson. Second, Baron. All right, we have a motion by Anderson and a second by Baron. Is are is there any discussion or does do any of the board members have any questions? Uh, yeah, I, when you said long standing, I believe the number was 1990. Is that correct? Um, probably. <laughs> That's at least a couple of decades. Um, probably longer probably than that. Yeah. Much. Back. That's yeah, that is correct. Right. Actually. Yes, Shashank confirms 1990. Yes, 1990. Yeah. If there's no further discussion or questions, um, Ms. Jenkins, will you please call the vote? Ms. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Barron. Yes. Ms. Bradley. Yes. Ms. Caldwell Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Ms. Della Gardell. Yes. And Ms. Sawyer. Yes. Okay, the vote is approved 7 0. Um, we do not have any information only items, which brings us to um, items of privilege. Um, I just have a very, I just have a short statement that I would like to share and read at this time. Black Lives Matter. To our community out protesting, marching, rallying, gathering, or otherwise witnessing in whatever capacity fits you best, I see you, I hear you, we see you, and we hear you. To our students, we especially see you, we hear you. Thank you for speaking up, for using your voices, for using your bodies to stand against injustice. I also wanna let you know that we're here for you. I know now is the time for shouting, for making your voices heard, but when you're ready for it, we're here to listen to you. When you're ready for next steps and have ideas on how to make your schools a better place, we're here. If you need help getting in touch with city council members or the mayor or county supervisors or other elected officials, we're here for you. Your teachers are here for you. DMPS is proud of you. To our community, if you're interested in getting involved in your schools, we're here. Check out our school board page on the Des Moines Schools.org website for more information about our community legislative action team and our academic SMART goals. Black Lives Matter, and we see you and we hear you. Thank you. Board members, does anyone else have any other remarks um, to share this evening? Uh, I do, actually. Um, I know that I contacted each of you um, in the last few days, but I, I wanted to um, kind of make an official announcement that um, my husband and I ha will be accepting uh, teaching positions um, to teach in Japan for this upcoming school year. So that means that um, obviously... I won't be able to be on the school board and teach in Japan um, unless you would allow that uh, virtual Zoom, you know, team meetings from Japan. But I think the time did a difference wouldn't probably allow for that. Um, and so it will be um, effective July 31st. Um, I wanted to give you enough time to um, appoint a new board member and make sure the public had uh, enough notice, um, you know, if they were, were if they were interested in um, applying or learning about the process, I guess. Um, I'll say a little bit more later on before I leave, but um, just wanted you to be able to move forward and didn't really plan on doing this, obviously. Um, uh, it was an opportunity that um was presented and i don't i didn't feel like we had the luxury of 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 waiting um due to our to our age <laughs> actually finding out um in japan or teaching overseas they they like teachers that are um, under the age of 55 so <laughs> apparently i'm in my 50s i i tend to forget about that um but uh, that's my news, and um, 
and I'll, I'll still be around until you know the end of July and August too potentially I don't know can't actually fly there right now so hoping that that changes um, that's it <laughs> could go on and on <laughs> Thanks, Heather. And just to update the board and public, um, what the process will, will look like is we'll actually be working um, on appointing someone to serve out part of Heather's term until um, November of 2021. And at that point, which is our next regularly scheduled school board election, um, there will be a, a special election to serve out the remainder of that, of that term at that point, which will be a two-year term from 21 to 23. So, um, board will be talking more about that um, here, here in the next you know week or so. I'll be getting in touch with each of you about having a work session to discuss how we'd like to proceed um, with our process. So, um, does anyone else have any other comments that they would be that they would like to share at this time? Uh, Kirsten, I have a few comments if I could take some time. Of Thank you. Um, first, I want to congratulate all the seniors. On graduating, I know this certainly was not how we were hoping to end our time with you, but it certainly doesn't take away from your tremendous accomplishments. Um, and I wish you all well in your future and whatever path you may follow. I also wanna congratulate our students and our teachers and educators and nutrition staff and bus drivers and custodians and all of our DMPS staff. On the completion of this unusual school year, uh, we were faced and rose to the challenge before us. And I know that we are going to be discussing a return to learn plan and work session tonight. And I know we're all anxious to learn about how next year will be structured and certainly hopeful we'll be back together as soon as it is safe for all. Um, also would like to recognize that it is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month to our LGBTQ students, staff and community. Um, but finally, I wanna share some thoughts on recent activities in the state and nationally in response to the murder of of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And over this last weekend, I participated in events in our community to honor Floyd's life and support Black Lives Matter. And I'm heartbroken at the pain experienced by members of our community, not just by what happened to George Floyd, but by all black men and women who were before him. At home, our family watched the evening protests and my daughter identified classmates, members of her school participating in the events. At one point, listening to the youth, it became clear to me that the path to action is not the same for all. And our kids are in, a, in the streets sharing their pain and we need to listen to them. We are at a time where we can and must be part of the conversations to promise equal opportunities for all of our kids to feel safe and achieve their dreams without the barriers our systems continue to place in front of them. I'm not or presenting a specific ask to my board colleagues, but rather raising awareness that we have a responsibility to guarantee our kids have access to quality education so they thrive, that we have a responsibility to promise our kids a supportive and nurturing learning environment so they are encouraged to achieve their maximum potential. We have a responsibility to support each child's learning and growth and not allow an environment to contribute to the school to prison pipeline as evident by our management limitation policy relating to the treatment of our students. We have a responsibility to be a part of the solution so our kids can achieve their dreams. I, as a white woman in this community and on this board, am committed to doing my own listening and learning to become a better ally. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I had another piece of, of my remarks that I had in a different spot that I, I just wanna share with you. Um, today is the 2nd of June, and so this is the month where we observe Juneteenth, and Juneteenth marks the anniversary of June 19th, 1865, which is the date when Union troops uh, finally arrived in Texas to announce that, announce that those enslaved were now free. We're honored that one of our um, board colleagues on the school board, Dewana Bradley, is the organizer of the Iowa Juneteenth observances. And this year's observance falls at a critical point in time. So as people um, here at home and across the country protest, uh, the systemic racism in our society. Juneteenth is a reminder of the long and tragic history of the enslaved, the original sin of our nation, and those um, and whose impact continues to this day. As uh, Superintendent um, Ahart noted in a letter that he had sent um, earlier today to our families and staff, it's the time for us to be actively anti-racist, not only in words, but in deeds. Um, as Iowa's largest 
and most diverse school district serving more than 20,000 students of color. The struggle against racism um, and for equity is important is a very important factor in our work from the board table to the classrooms uh, to beyond. And DMPS has been proud to be part of past Juneteenth observances and looks forward to continue to continuing to participate. This is just one small way that we can remember the long trail that has led to many of us joining um, joining with our community members, with our neighbors, um, with our brothers and sisters on the streets today. So. Um, Kirsten, I just want to say thank you to the board um, and to you, Dr. Ahart, for recognizing Juneteenth. It definitely is something that is more important now than ever. Um, I don't want to say too much because talking too much about this gets me emotional, but um, I just want to encourage you all to continue to seek to understand as we go through these times. I encourage you to stand by our side during this time as we have a great opportunity to make the systemic change that we should have made years ago. And so again, I just want to thank you all for recognizing Juneteenth and the work that we do, but we still have a lot more work to do. And to our young people, I stand by you and I see you. And I wanna encourage you to keep the fight because I know that change is going to come. And I ask you all that can hear my voice to continue to stand as we make change, not only in our city, but across the United States. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a brief statement I would like to read as well. Thank you, Terry. Absolutely. Um, while the song lyrics tell us that it takes 525,600 minutes to quantify the value of a human life, just one week ago yesterday, it took eight minutes and 46 seconds for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin to take the life of George Floyd. While it takes 525,600 minutes to measure years and miles, it took only eight minutes and 46 seconds to bring a city to its knees, stop a country in its tracks, and challenge the racial conscience of a nation. Knowing how to respond and more importantly, how to use your voice and influence in the midst of chaos and uncertainty is where we all find ourselves today. But no matter your background, your race or socioeconomic status, the questions linger and where to from here is the challenge of the day. So today my message is simple. Use your eight minutes and 46 seconds for good be the change, stand in the gap and do something so that the next 5,000, 25,000, 525,600 minutes will be the difference for us all. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Board members, with no further comments from us, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Ahart for his report. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, I issued a statement earlier today, um, which I, I won't repeat here, um, but I, I do want to emphasize that in that statement, I did encourage um, our community to um, weigh in with me, and the, the email address is right there, and several people have already, um, to help me understand where we're not hitting the mark in the cause of racial justice in our community and in our country. Um, this has been a, a try not to repeat words that you've all heard a thousand times, but I don't know if there are better words to characterize it. This has been a challenging last three months for our community for a number of reasons. And I, I really feel, you know, especially with an election coming up here in a few short months, that um, that we're really at a precipice as a country and we can leave it up to others to shift the winds of change or we can create the winds of change ourselves and so i'm just urging our entire community to be reflective of of where they stand 
in regards to the most pressing challenges that we're facing right now and challenge them to take the action that their heart directs them to take so that we can shift these winds in a positive direction. Certainly we have decades or centuries old issues that we're we're still as a country trying to conquer. And that's no less true here in Des Moines and Des Moines Public Schools than it is anywhere else in the country. Um, we have a, a huge challenge in front of us. And as I always uh, attempt to do is view every challenge as an opportunity. So. I think that there's a very bright future ahead for all of us, especially for our young men and women of color, but only if we as the leaders of the community and the citizens of our community decide proactively to be active and engage in a positive way towards shifting these winds of change. And that's all I have, Kirsten. Thanks, Tom. Um, without any other items of business before us, the meeting is adjourned and let's just go ahead and roll right into our work session here. Immediately following. Calling the meeting over so.